Well, hey, CT at Home family, what a great day it is, is we're going to be wrapping up this again series. And this is going to be a special message talking about it, what it looks like for us to sacrifice again. Toby's got a great word for us, and I want to encourage you to open up your heart, uh, to focus in, because I know it can help you receive the hope that God has for you today. So let's jump in together. I'd read enough of the Bible to understand that this concept of sacrifice was woven from Genesis, the first book of the Bible, to Revelation. I understood that, that when you read the Old Testament, what you see is a bloody mess. I mean, you've got lamb and goats and sheep and, and all kinds of animals being sacrificed on altars. In fact, when, when uh, God's people would come together, History tells us they would have to build tributaries around the temple. There were so many animals being sacrificed that, the, the, that these little tributaries would carry the excess blood out into the river, and the river would flow blood red. But the fact of the matter is there wasn't one sin forgiven in that moment. It wasn't until Jesus came and became the ultimate sacrifice that uh, we received the life that God had always promised us. That the heartbeat of the word of God is the sacrifice of Jesus and the response that brings us life is our willingness to be a living sacrifice. That sacrifice is not a restriction on anything, it is an invitation into everything God has for us. That we are never more like God than when we choose willingly to crawl up on the altar and become a living sacrifice and give him our pain, our lack of hope, our need for him to answer a prayer in some way. When we sacrifice those things, that we truly begin to become free and become everything God has called us to be. Uh, I have people ask me all the time, well, uh, Toby, when, when, when you talk about a generous heart, which is a big part of what we talk about here at Cross Timbers, when you talk about sacrifice, are you talking about time? Are you talking about money? Are you talking about uh, gifting? I've heard, you know, there's been teaching on time, talent, Trevor, am I answer is what Jesus answer was what God is calling me to give is the thing that I find hardest to release to him for me for the longest time it was my need to be God in my own life it was again me putting conditions on a relationship with a God who loved me unconditionally my need to find an answer to a specific prayer and my refusal to accept God's voice saying, my grace is sufficient, my power is going to show up in your life in weakness, not in strength. And the story of my life and ministry and marriage and friendships is born out of being well acquainted with the pain of mental wellness and, and coming to the place where... Uh, you get humbled to the place that you trust God and you are given this gift of being able to sense pain in the lives of others. I have said many times, I, I wouldn't wish that this on anyone, but I shudder when I think about who I would have been if I didn't have this affliction, this challenge in my life, but I never would have received it until I was willing to sacrifice my conditions for what God ought to do in my life. And I would say this about a living sacrifice. See, the hard thing about Hebrews 12 too, when it says offer your bodies as living sacrifices, is implied in those words are that a living sacrifice has a tendency to crawl off the altar from time to time. <laughs> Uh, that it is a decision of the will again and again and again in sacrificing 
what we grip so tightly in our hands that we find the life that we've been looking for. And it's only there that we will find the truth of Jesus' words that it is better to give than it is to receive. Not too long ago, I had a dear friend who was, uh, she was having a special birthday and she's a very dear friend, uh, sister to me and my wife, Micah. And, and the, here's the hard thing, like she's a great gift giver. She's probably one of the best gift givers I've ever met in my life. And uh, I'm not. And Micah said, what in the world are we gonna get her for her? birthday gift and I said you know what I'm going to pray about it and I really have no idea and I began to like ask God God would you like I want to I, I want to give her something symbolically significant I want to I, I, help me think of something uh, that will communicate to her like how much we value her as a part of our family and and uh I didn't hear a voice. I didn't see a picture. But the, I, I'm sitting there, and I've been praying this for two or three days, and I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, this thought comes to me. And uh, it was a thought about uh, some cards that I've had for over 20 years, and they're these old index cards, and they're frayed, and they're dirty, and they're uh, covered in snot, and they're my handwritten words about the 40 I ams. And uh, in, the middle, in the middle of this battle with panic and anxiety, I discovered 40 statements about who God says he is and who he says I am. And I, I, I sat down one day in frustration, honestly, ran over to the CVS store, grabbed some cards, came home and started writing out every one of them by hand. I'm a child of God and I would write the verse and uh, I am, kept in safety everywhere I go and I would write the verse and uh, Micah would come home some nights and I would literally be sitting at the picnic table on our uh, behind our house and I would be just crying and I'm, I'm saying these out loud and I'm throwing them down and uh, I have said to Micah for years I've said to other friends for years hey you're going to bury me with those cards uh, it's hard for me to describe how much emotion is in me about those because they are so symbolic of this journey that I've been on for all of these years and a tool that has really, God has used his truth to help me. And I gotta tell you something, my first thought was, I ain't doing that. I have told people many times, that's one of my most like precious possessions on the planet, I ain't giving that up. And uh, as I prayed about it and thought about it, and as I sat there, I started thinking, not simply about her, but I started thinking about my kids. and I. So I'm thinking about other people in my life that uh, are like family to me. That's one of my highest values. And I, honestly, I started thinking about people that knew my journey intimately enough to know how valuable a gift that would be. And uh, I took one of those. I, I took one of those cards. The short version is and a copy of uh, a book I wrote, and I took it down to a store that puts it in a frame. And uh, I couldn't wait for it to come back. And it was a little few days after her birthday, and I, but I, I couldn't wait. And Micah put it in a bag with, you know, did all the girl thing to it. And I had, handed her a little card that I wrote in it that I, this story, just I've, I've been asking God for some, uh, something that symbolically would say to you how much we love you. And uh, she opened it and she, and she looked at it and she instantly just broke and like I haven't seen her break many times in her life. And I'm telling you all that to say, to get to this, not look at what I did. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that moment, I felt as much joy as I can remember in a long time. And I got in the car, and the tears run down my face and I said, That was one of the funnest things that I've done in recent memory. It really is better to give than it is to receive. And I, I know that to be true intellectually, like in my head, but the only way it can be experienced is when you do it. When 
you decide to trust Jesus with stuff that really matters to you, you find the life that really brings life. And uh, when we learn to forgive again and hope again and sacrifice again and again and again, I'm not telling you it's easy. I'm telling you it works. Like, it's almost like Jesus knew what he was talking about. And so today I want to pray for us. I want to pray that uh, whatever God's speaking to you about that you need to release to him. Maybe it's a mindset like where I began. Maybe, uh, I don't know what it is, whatever it is that you're sensing like in your spirit. Yeah, uh, one of the ways I know it's God is it makes my heart beat a little fast. <laughs> like if it doesn't scare me a little bit, it's probably just me, right? And uh, whatever that is, that God would give you uh, a mustard seed of faith that you might be able to release it to him. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much uh, that the ultimate sacrifice was given for us named Jesus. Thank you, Father, that the only hope of life we have uh, is through his sacrifice. And there's no way we emulate you more than doing what he did and giving of ourselves for others. And so... Lord, I would, I would pray in a time and a season where people are tending to hang on tightly to their, their conditions about how you ought to operate, uh, their time, their, their money, their energy, whatever it is for them, Father, that you would uh, give them that supernatural ability to release and experience that joy. Lord, I'll never forget the joy the day that I finally said, okay, I'm, I'm giving up my need for you to answer my prayer this way and the joy that came into my life. And uh, yet it's still hard for me. And so, Father, would you give me the power to do it again and again and again? We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There is a sound I love to hear it's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praises, he hears faith. of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear worship, he hears faith.
days aloud Awake my soul and sing Sing his praise aloud oh, Sing his praise aloud One of the things that I really took away from that is when Toby talks about that thing that makes our heart beat fast there at the end, uh, that might be the thing that God is asking us uh, to give up, to, to allow him to use, to give away. Uh, and so I want to encourage you to really lean into that. What is it that makes your heart beat fast when you think about the idea of having to release it and what would it look like for you to do that? You know, a lot of times we talk about that. We talk about, uh, especially within uh, this sort of faith world, the idea of giving in our finances. Uh, and sure, this is good for you. This is uh, what we read in God's word. This is uh, a growing step for us as we become closer to who Jesus is. But the truth is, it's much more than just releasing that. It's the idea of what's being built when we choose to allow God to use what we're giving him, when we choose to allow God to use what he's already blessed us with, it's part of the heart behind our Waymaker project that we've been talking about for a few weeks. And I want to encourage you, you can ask your host, you can visit our waymakerproject.com, the website, and it'll give you all the information about, yes, sure, giving your finances, but what we're going to be able to do together as a church family. It's much more than just a dollar sign. It's about leaving a legacy for those who are not in yet, for those who have not experienced the hope that we have experienced for the next generation, the, the kids who are our kids, my own kids, your own kids, but even the ones who aren't even born yet, about leaving something for them so that they can receive hope and give hope in the name of Jesus. And so I want to encourage you. I really do. I want to encourage you to think about what would it look like on this day, this special day, uh, to choose to commit uh, to that project, to choose to commit to sacrifice again what God is asking you to give. Thank you. Thank you for continuing to, to meet, uh, to receive hope together, but also to turn around and to be giving hope in the name of Jesus to your neighbors and your community. Uh, I love hearing the stories that are coming in about the life change that's happening because of what we get to do together as a church family. So I hope you have a great day. Make sure you come back as we're starting a new series called Renew. It's gonna be a, a lot of fun. We're having lots of different things that we're gonna be able to do uh, together during this series that are going to encourage us each day. So make sure you come back for Renew next week. Have a great week. We'll see you then.